Hey everyone, my name is Lynx Camelli. I've just spent the last two weeks or so grinding out Bosja and acquiring my final stage Shadowbringer's Relic Weapon. The experience was extremely tedious and boring, with moments of greatness sprinkled in between with the Bosja raids. This is now my third expansion in a row, finishing my Relic Weapon extremely late, but I have always gotten the final stage Relic Weapon for every expansion I've played. This time around though, I felt the least motivated to get my Relic, and it was because I kept asking myself, What's the point in doing the grind when I already have an extremely powerful weapon from Savage Raids? So it made me ask the question, how important are Relic Weapons in FF14? Let's talk about it. And by the way, I'm not going to talk about Crafter and Gather Relics in this video, as they are very different from Battle Relics, and basically boil down to they're good if you're cheap, and worse if you want the best stats in the game. Before we get into how Relic Weapons compare to other weapons in the game, it's gotta be said that whether or not Relic Weapons are powerful in comparison, the main reason most people work towards Relic Weapons is because they often look really cool, and there might be a weapon you really like the appearance of, and for that alone, you'll grind out a Relic. The final stage Relic Weapons from each expansion are common glamour items that people have used for years. Despite them being long grinds that can take potentially months, Relic Weapon content outlives the expansion that specific Relic Weapons are relevant in, which is super cool. Years after Eureka's initial release, people are still in there every day leveling up and hunting down notorious monsters. Despite the grind being potentially tedious and annoying, they are at least memorable experiences, and I can remember every single Relic Weapon I've made and the journey it took to get them. However, we aren't answering the initial question we asked. How powerful are Relic Weapons? Well, the easy answer is, they're the best weapons in the game, alright? Thanks for watching, peace. But that's not exactly telling the full story, as it's very situational and time dependent. Relic weapons are only the most powerful weapons in the game at the very last patch of an expansion, when the final stage relic weapon quest releases, meaning that for 90% of an expansion, relics are not even on the radar as a weapon upgrade. It's way more efficient to get a higher item level weapon from crafted gear, extreme trials, or tombstones. It's only when the very final stage quest is released does the item level of a relic weapon match that of a savage raid weapon. So if relics match savage raid weapon item level, then they're just the same, right? So raiders get the savage weapon and non-raiders get the relic weapon, right? Again, this isn't telling the full story. Relic weapons, despite being the same item level as Savage Weapons, do not have Materia slots. To make up for that lack of Materia, the stats on Relic Weapons are increased, and you can choose which stats your Relic Weapon has while you are making it. This means that if you want a Crit Debt Direct Weapon, then you can choose those stats, and how much of each stat you get. This is where we get into the bulk of the comparison. On some classes, Relic Weapons are extremely minor upgrades, such as this Warrior Axe. A warrior does not use direct hit, only critical hit, determination, and skill speed. And since we don't need skill speed on our weapon and our critical hit slash determination cap, that only leaves tenacity, the worst stat in the game. However, for other classes, like currently White Mage, the Relic Weapon can increase your spell speed to the next spell speed tier, and then give you more room to have other stats increased through other pieces of gear, making the Relic Weapon extremely important to a best-in-slot gear set, as opposed to the Warrior's lack of a major gain. So depending on the highest item level gear of a given patch, Relic Weapons can be extremely minor gains that you don't care about, or gear set defining items. The problem with all that, though, is that we are talking about a weapon that only exists in the very last patch of an expansion. By then, all the raid content has been released, and the last patch of an expansion only releases a Trial and a 24-man, not a Savage Raid. This means that for Raiders, you will always have a better option than a Relic Weapon for raid progression throughout an expansion. Typically, as a raider, your weapon progression goes from the crafted weapon, to the newest extreme trial weapon, to a tombstone weapon if you need it, and finally to the savage raid weapon. Sometimes, if we're lucky, we can also get an ultimate weapon to top it all off. Also, savage raids can be cleared in full crafted gear, meaning that in reality, you don't need any better weapon to clear. Better gear just makes the raid easier, which is fine. That means though for raiders, relic weapons are the least important weapons in the game, unless you care about parsing at the end of an expansion or something like that. For the non-raiders, however, your weapon progression is much different. More options open up, with the ultimate goal being a tombstone weapon. This is where I think a relic weapon can fit in during an expansion. 
for non-raiders, relic weapons can be potential upgrades as you won't be getting an extreme trial weapon and generally relics are more powerful than crafted weapons, eventually. But this only brings us to another issue, which is that even for the MSQ, you are put in 8-man trials and everyone that is level 80 has done some form of grouped battle content. This means that even as a non-raider, you're still probably doing the normal mode raids, just not extreme trials, savages, or ultimates. Even getting a relic weapon requires multiple boss to raid clears. So even if you have no intention of raiding high-end content, you still have access to the tombstone weapon because tombstone weapons require materials from the final boss of normal mode raids. So if you can get a near savage raid level weapon as a non-raider and it's not a relic, well then again, there's no use for them until the final patch of an expansion. A slight redeeming factor is that the final stage relic weapons are the only way a non-raider can get an equal or better than savage raid level weapon. This does make them worth doing, as eventually they will become the best items, but with so many reasons as to why relic weapons aren't important until the very last patch of an expansion, that leads me to why I wait so long to even start working on a relic. Typically, release day is when you will see the most amount of players engaging with a new piece of content, and in this context we're talking about relic weapon content. That often means that the most fun time to play is on the release of new patches, obviously. But if you work on relic weapons on release, there is now a 99% chance that the quest you just did will eventually get nerfed and be much easier later in the expansion. FF14 often makes relic grinds extremely tedious when they are current content, and then when a few more patches get released and more gear comes out, they go back and nerf the old relic weapon steps, so that more people can get up to the current step with higher item levels. When you know that for every single patch, except the very last of an expansion, you will have a better weapon available to you, and the grind to get a relic weapon will be much easier at that last patch after the quests get nerfed, well then it only makes sense to wait and do all of the relic grind in one go at the end, when it's the easiest. This is exactly what I've done for all three expansions I've played this game. I heard stories from my friends about needing to grind out 60 alliance raids and 500 Delabroom Savage runs and 62,000 normal mode clear- I'm obviously being exaggerative here, but it just sounded horrible, so I didn't do it. And the best part is that all those steps eventually got nerfed, and when I went through those steps, it was no big deal. We went down from 62,000 normal mode raid clears to only 20. <laughs> and it has to be said that when you aren't waiting for a new patch to release the next relic weapon step, the story is much easier to follow because you can do it all at once. It's like waiting until the end of a season of a show to watch all the episodes in a week. So in conclusion, how important are relic weapons in FF14? Well, for most of an expansion, not important at all. They won't be equipped unless you have multiple for badly geared alts, and you'll always have a better option whether you're a raider or not. But, hold on, for the very end of an expansion, they are the best weapons in the game. By an extremely small amount. Depending on your class, of course. The main reason, like I said, people get relic weapons is not for their power or DPS increase, it's because they look cool. And honestly, that's all it takes. FF14 is mostly a cosmetic driven game, when even ultimate raid weapons give extremely tiny DPS increases and are mostly done for the appearance and titles, I think it's fine that relic weapons are such a grind, but aren't super powerful. They have some of the most unique appearances in the game, and when you see them, you know the work someone has put in to get it. I just wish that instead of nerfing relic weapon steps later in an expansion, they just release them in a nerf state, so that doing relic weapon content on release doesn't feel like you're doing extra work that will get invalidated later. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, leave a like. If you didn't, a dislike. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay updated on my uploads, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.